Once again, we're here uh, with Stephanie Johnston and the Johnston team with First uh, Service First Mortgage. Uh, talking about mortgage, each week we talk a different phase of it or a different idea of it. And today, uh, we're still gonna, sort of going to talk about sticker shock, aren't we? I guess you could call it sticker shock. Uh, they, you're in Dallas, and Dallas, the city of Dallas passed a law last night that says no more VRBOs, no more, no more short-term rentals. Yes. Uh, that's going to put tell all those people to sell their home, come down here to Crystal Beach. We'll gladly take them. Exactly. Um, so, so I think break it down first. Let's let people know what's defined as short term in Dallas, midterm, and long term. So first off, that's a, a great segue into this. So anything a short term rental, so STR, if you see that, is defined as a rental sub thirty days. So you yeah. rent your property less than 30 days at a given time, you're defined as short term. Usually when you see midterm, you have people that may do one to you know three or six month leases where the people in between, you know, maybe someone um, a short term property, but the, sometimes those are furnished and sometimes not when you see midterm. And then long term, a lot of those are gonna be 12 months or greater right. as far as the, the way to rent property. Okay, one is before anyone says anything, Galveston, we're in Galveston County for one. Two, the rental business and hot tax down here is unbelievable in Galveston County. It would shut down Galveston, Galveston, Bolivar Peninsula. I mean, the county would be in trouble if we got rid of short-term rentals. Correct. Um, so where do we go from here then? So I think that that's, you know, I wanted to bring this up simply because he, uh, Dallas City, for example, not Dallas County, Dallas City, the city of Dallas voted on this last night. It just came out, I think, 1145 last night. They've been going back and forth on this. And, you know, it scares people into buying short term rentals like, well, I don't want to buy a house and have this happen. So the first thing is who can outlaw or tell you cannot have your house as short term rental? It's going to be a city and then HOAs potentially. And why I say potentially is there's a lot you know, can they, can they not consult an attorney, right? If your HOA says no, but you say yes, and you know, there's some ambiguity in there, but 100% any city can say that they, you cannot, um, you cannot have a short-term rental, again, a rental sub 30 days. So when you see that where my properties are, so again, my connection is I have uh, multiple properties in Bolivar. I think it's a great place for short-term rentals. You're in the county. So the county, we they can't outlaw you, so we're safe there. And number two, like Dave said, um, it's a market that is built on tourism. Um, it's a definition. It's where people love to go to the beach. You're not going to get rid of the source of your income and places to stay, especially in Bolivar. There's there's no hotels. Maybe one day someone will build a right. build us a big hotel or whatnot. But it's houses, and that's how people stay. And so we wanted to bring that up, that it's a great place to invest in short-term rentals that's safe and that you don't need to be scared about what happened in Dallas happening down there. Right. What about financing uh, short-term rentals? You know, we've got, uh, that's a big business down here is short-term rentals. But now we also have our first set of condos coming in. And I think we're going to touch on the condo deal down the road a little bit. But is the financing for short-term rentals, say a family says, hey, let's buy a house. And as long as we can cash flow it to where it pays the taxes and insurance and we can use it a little bit, you know, it'll be worth it to, for us. What's the differences in financing a second home versus a short-term rental if you're going into it with the rental business? So absolutely. So the first thing I'd say when you get into this space, a lot of people don't know where to go. So I've got... Um, I've done some actual um, seminars, um, consumer direct seminars, where we talk about you want to go into short term rentals. What do you do? So I do want anybody that's interested in us hosting another one. We'd be happy to do that. Um, I have some agents in the marketplace that also that are very familiar with short term rentals, property management companies, et cetera, um, that we can go into. Because, I mean, it's 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 hours of conversation right on this topic. Right. Um, I think one of the most important things when you talk financing in short term rentals is making sure that you're using a lender and a real estate agent that are familiar with short-term rentals specifically um, and helping you determine if they're cash going to cash flow and they're going to meet your goals 
So some people are buying property and saying, I, you know, like I just want to cover my tax insurance. I want to use it a lot or just cover some of my payment. Sometimes it's actually a true business and cash flow is the most important thing. You're going to finance the property differently and you're probably going to buy a different home depending on those goals. And most people don't know where to get that data. So that would be something you can call me and I can help you with it. Um, but on that note, there are different types of loans where the down payment's a little bit different. If you're going to just have it as a vacation home, you don't rent a little bit more down if you uh, are going to have it as a rental property. But also on that, Dave, it's a, sometimes actually a little easier to qualify if you're going to have income off of it because we can show that that property is going to derive income versus just being another mortgage payment. So it actually helps some people qualify when we show them as, as rentals. What happens if they go out and they buy it and they've got a home loan on it, they're using it as a second loan, and then they decide, well, man, let's we're not getting down there as much as we typically do, thought, let's put it in the rental. Do they have to go back and redo the financing? No. So when you do a loan, it's the intent at the time of purchase. So even if you say, I'm going to buy a home to live in, completely mm -hmm. fine because that is your intention to live in there, you know, at the upfront. Um, things change. So people can take a primary home or a second home and turn it into a short term or long term rental um, at any point because they bought it with the intention, they moved into it or they had it as a second home and then change it up. So I think that's a great question because a lot of people think you need to redo that. Absolutely not. Um, you know, it's just more the intention of I was going to move in this and then turn it into rental. You know, lenders don't love that, but but yeah. things change. Not a problem at all. Okay. I know one time I told my wife, I said, man, let's buy a house and just use it as a rental and we can stay here. And at the time we were in a brand new fifth wheel. She said, there's no way I'm going to stay in this. And it was a nice one. But, you know, uh, if people want to get hold of you and talk more, I know you do a lot of classes uh and you can set up specific classes if there's a group of people that want to learn about short-term rental and financing and how to make everything uh work out how can people get a hold of you if they want to go down that road absolutely and on that so if you're a builder or you're a developer or a real estate agent and this is something you want to do for your clients or just your office or your sphere so whether it's industry people or non-industry people um, I have classes for both. And again, we talk about the sh specifically a lot of classes on short term rental. Also, um, next week, we'll talk about condo financing for that new condo complex coming down there. Yeah. Um, we it's very different on financing. So we'll talk a little bit about that next week. And we have a whole class on that. Um, give us a call, email, text, um, Facebook, whatever works for reaching out is fine. So my website, which is stephjohnston.com is going to have all of my contact information. So I got a T in there. Um, or you can obviously call, which is 214-576-2934. Great, great. Well, we'll be back next week with another show, and it looks like it's going to be about the condo, uh, about condo financing. And that that won't just work here. That's anywhere. You know, so Correct. if you're looking here, if you're looking in Galveston, South Padre, maybe up at the Lake, House, Lake they have some condos up at Conroe uh she can take care of it no matter where it is and she knows the business especially the rental business because she's in it so steph thanks for joining us today we'll be back next week with another show talking real uh in <laughs> home loans here on bolivar peninsula until next time i'm david with bolivar live y'all have a great day great week come see us god bless and bye bye